I would like to explain the Kensuguri to you. Among the basic Ken practices left by the founder are the Ki Musubi no Tachi and the five Kumi Tachi. Since the Kumi Tachi are quite complicated, you must learn the basic seven Suburi in order to avoid becoming confused and to be able to safely practice the kumitachi. I formulated seven suburi practices by selecting movements from these seven kumitachi. You must practice the suburi a sufficient amount in order to execute the kumitachi safely. I will now perform the suburi. The first suburi. Hey. 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 It's no suburi. Let me explain the first suburi. All of the Aiki Kumitachi start with the sword held at the center level in a horizontal position in order to execute a decisive movement. The first suburi represents an important exercise for learning the decisive movement in sword practices. Thus we stop the sword in the decisive position in the first suburi. Next, the second suburi. The hips are engaged fully to finish in the hami position in the second suburi in such a way so as to avoid an ai uchi or mutual kill situation with the sword. This is a characteristic of Aikido. If our hips were left in a straightforward position, this would result in a mutual kill situation with the sword. This distinction can be seen in photographs of the founder using the sword. I will now show the third suburi. Let me explain the use of the third suburi. It is used in the kumitachi and kimusubi no tachi. At this point, the founder explained that we should perform this movement with a feeling of assimilating ourselves into the universe by inhaling universal ki through the tip of the sword, passing through the nose, and arriving at the seika tanden. Here, we do not raise our shoulders or the sword, but rather lower the hips and relax the shoulders. We exhale forcefully, striking directly over the head. This is an incorrect Ken movement. Come straight over the head, and taking a large step forward, cut downward. I will now explain the fourth suburi. Hey. 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 Let me explain. 
In Aikido, we make no distinction between right and left. Whether we are in the right or left kami, we practice using the sword so that it and the body function as a single unit. This was the fourth suburi. Now the fifth suburi. The fifth suburi is the movement most often used in the kumitachi. From the right hami, we raise the sword from the right in such a way as to protect our bodies and strike downward, ending up in the left hami. From the left hami, we move the sword to the left, protecting our body, and then step forward with the right foot to strike, finishing in the right hami. We move our bodies fully to the right and left in the kumitachi. In the suburi, we practice adjusting our positions to the right and left hami as appropriate. I'll now explain the sixth suburi. Here, we blend with the sword being raised and then thrust. It is one of the movements included in the Ki Musubi no Tachi exercise. We dodge the oncoming Shomenuchi attack to the right and immediately, when our opponent attempts to attack, we execute a thrust. This is the sixth suburi. Now I'll explain the seventh suburi. The seventh suburi is used in the second and fourth kumitachi. In this movement, our strike is parried downward and we free the sword circularly and then counter with a thrust. When the enemy blocks or parries the sword downward, we always use this counter against his block or parry. This is used in the second and fourth kumitachi. I'll now do all seven suburi for you from a different angle. The first suburi. The second suburi. The fourth suburi.
the sixth Suburi. The seventh Suburi.
I would now like to explain the kumitachi or paired sword movements. These kumitachi were taught to us by the founder in exactly this way. We do not precisely know the origin of these movements. Whatever the case, when Morihe Ueshiba would execute a movement, it would be expressed in a highly personalized manner. These kumitachi can always be adapted to taijutsu techniques. You should always have in mind taijutsu techniques when executing the kumitachi. The founder taught numerous variations. Ki musubi no tachi. I'll explain. All Aikido techniques begin with blending movements. Taijutsu, the Ken, and Zhou techniques all begin with blending movements. This type of movement represents the essence of Aikido. We can learn this important principle through practice of the Ken. We both raise our swords above our heads, matching movements. We have the feeling of absorbing the key of the universe, and we attempt to cultivate a mushin or selfless state in the same way as in Zazen seated meditation. As his strike comes, I move off to the right and counter strike. When he tries to raise his sword to attack me, I thrust him from below by matching his movement. Then I avoid his strike, moving to the left and strike him. He steps backward to raise his sword, and I match his movement, cutting him at the wrist. We'll do it again. We'll now execute the first kumitachi. I'll explain. As I raise my sword intending to strike, he blends with me and thrusts at my chest. I step back, dodging his sword to protect my body and cut downward. He steps forward with his left leg to strike me. I step backward and parry him from the left hami. He comes to attack me in the right hami. Stepping back from the left hami to the right hami, I strike downward to the parallel position, parrying him, and then thrust. It is important that we don't end up in a mutual kill situation. This is an important sword principle. We'll do it again. In the middle of the movement, we'll change to a sword-taking taijutsu variation. Before that, I will match his movement, attacking his wrist. This position leads directly to a tachidori, or sword-taking technique.
There is also a variation at the initial stage. This leads directly to a sword taking technique. The second kumitachi. I'll explain. He, the uchitachi, or attacking sword, slowly raises his weapon, and I, the uketachi, or receiving sword, match his movement. He attempts to strike my leg since he cannot attack my forehead, and I parry. As I attempt to cut his wrist, he thrusts using the movement contained in the seventh suburi. Then I take a step back, twisting my hips to parry his sword. He steps forward to strike me and I take another step backward and I again parry and press his sword downward. He again uses the thrusting movement from the seventh suburi and again I parry. I counter his final strike by bringing my sword to the horizontal position to execute the decisive movement. We will now execute variations. All of the first kumitachi variations form the basis and the others are applied techniques. If you think in these terms, you can freely create variations. In this particular parry, the decisive movement is executed with a hip turn. A sword taking technique is also possible from the same position. A sword taking technique can be executed here or kotegaishi or this sword taking technique. This is Aikido. The third Kumitachi. I'll explain. We parry our partner's sword and counter strike. Or I check his intention and direct his mind downward. For example, when he strikes the Kumitachi changes in the manner of the fifth Suburi. Immediately, I parry his sword and withdraw. Then he again tries to strike me, and I parry, finishing in the horizontal position. Afterwards, it is possible to execute all of the variations we used in the first and second kumitachi. It is also possible to enter for a koshinage, or hip throw. We'll execute the third kumitachi again. The fourth kumitachi. If we were to perform this kata at this range, it would be dangerous and injuries would be likely to occur. We both move forward executing irimi or entering thrust. Therefore, for safety's sake during training, we both take one step back. He thrusts straight forward and I thrust him using an irimi movement. If he raises his shoulder and thrusts too high, he will injure my face. So please execute the proper basic thrust without raising your shoulder. I too must execute a proper irimi thrust to his chest. Next, I deflect his sword downward. He then enters to thrust as in the seventh suburi, and I parry like this. We control his next attack in the same manner as in the first suburi. We'll do it again. The fifth kumitachi. I'll explain. He takes a large step forward to attack. 
I step off to the left side, bringing my right leg to the rear. My role changes from that of the attacker to that of the defender. After parrying, he again steps forward with his right foot to strike. I step backward and enter in the manner of a tachidori movement. Basically speaking, in Aikido, we never lock swords. If he pushes with his sword, we turn in this manner. Therefore, as soon as I approach him, he turns to the left, entering, and attacks my leg. Then, I change my position to receive his attack. Next, he comes to strike my forehead. At that moment, I match his sword and deflect it downward. There are also sword variations. They are all applied techniques. Another variation. All of these applications are executed with the feeling of performing taijutsu techniques. I'll do it again. ありがとうございました。